गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ इनोवेशन इनक्यूबेशन एंटरप्रोनरशिप डेवलपमेंट सेल आई आई डी सी ऑफ एस एस एम एस इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ इंफॉर्मेशन टेक्नोलॉजी आई प्रज्वल गायकवाड वेलकम मिस्टर विजय तड़ेले सर टूडेज गेस्ट ऑफ ऑनर फॉर दिस वेबिनार विच इज innovation validation converting innovation into startup let me uh, introduce vijay sir first mr vijay tarele is a management consultant and advisor to startup incubators he was a former ceo of coep's bhau institute of innovation entrepreneurship and leadership for 5 years Prior to his entrepreneurial ecosystem development journey, Vijay Tarele had professional career spanning over 31 years in global IT services organizations, including TCS, Silverline Technologies, Cybertech Systems, Asila uh, Kale Consultants, and Quinox Consultancy Services Limited. for a majority of his career he was the member of executive management responsible for overall it services delivery management pre sales resource management business growth pnl of and overall growth of delivery organizations in 2017 he started his own consultancy Uh, to support small and mid-sized IT services organizations by providing expertise in developing efficient delivery organizations he also decided to support the startups community and for last 5 years he was managing the coep's bhau institute incubator he has supported and mentored about 150 plus startups at bhau institute and been an active member of developing entrepreneurship ecosystem across state and india for bhav institute he has been jury on many panels for startup evaluations including aicts ministry of educations innovations and startup competitions he was also observer for dst for entrepreneurship training programs he is also member of many institutes isc that is institute innovation councils advisory councils he has graduated in mechanical engineering from uh, vjti mumbai in 1984 and he has mtech from iit bombay in 1986 this is just a brief in introduction to uh, vijay sir uh, there is much more to his introduction so uh, i welcome uh, vijay sir for this webinar sir uh, you can start your the session thank, thank you. you thank you thank you prank let me share my screen am i audible yes sir yes sir okay is my screen visible yes sir okay uh, thank you good morning everybody good morning uh, thank you thank you professor gaikwad and uh, the aissms institute of information technology uh, principal and uh, uh, all the faculty uh, for inviting me for this sessions all the students who are uh, attending this sessions the focus is how do we validate innovations and how do you convert convert innovations or ideas into a startup so a lot of time i will focus on few concepts uh, for innovation validation as well as uh, how how does one goes through a uh, different phases to convert your ideas into a startup uh, let's before we jump into how we do uh, innovation validations uh, let me spend few minutes on uh, <laughs> what is actually innovation lot of times uh, Uh, there is a, a dilemma in the or there is a confusion in the minds of the students or uh, other members as to only a technology innovation is an innovation whereas there are a lot of different types of innovations so if you look at there are nine types of innovations 
okay, uh, which are uh, listed on this slide, uh, which is uh, service uh, and business model innovations, disruptive innovations, uh, breakthrough innovations within an organization innovations, uh, incremental innovations, product and process innovations. So, uh, I think uh, if I would like to, some of you can put your answers into the chat box. Okay. Uh, can somebody give me an example of business model innovations, like new ways in which an organization creates, delivers, and captures value? It's basically a new ways of doing some business. It's some. It's a different way of doing business. Can somebody give? I am sure uh, some of the students and the faculty who are being part of the uh, IIC and IEDC sales will know some of these uh, new startups which we are using day in and day out, uh, and uh, they are business model innovations. Any 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 answer? Anybody can put your answer in the chat. What could be an example of a business model innovation? Chat, let me see. Anybody? So what are the I'm not able to get Hello. And they start the month and okay either. Hello. Hello, I'm an audible. Yes, sir, you are audible. No, because there was is there a cross connection or something or somebody speak? I think someone unmuted. I'll ask them. Please, okay, everyone, okay. please uh, mute yourself. Okay. So I think uh, I know this is becomes difficult in an online session, uh, but uh, in an offline session, I could just see the answers from some of the participants. Uh, there are different kinds of business model innovation. Some of the examples are uh, Airbnb, Zomato, Swiggy, Oyo Rooms, Ola. These are some of the uh, these are some of the examples of the if you look at this business model innovations like Airbnb, Oyo Rooms, Uber, Uber Ola. Uh, D to C direct to consumer. See some of these things they are, they are existing. It's like previously we used to have paying guest, which is now converted to Airbnb. Oyo rooms is like uh, hotels uh, where Oyo has a uh, connection and Oyo has a standard which says standard Oyo rooms. Uber, Ola Auto. These are the previously we used to have taxis. Okay, but Uber and Ola came up with a business model innovations, different way of doing business. Uh, taxis and uh, at your doorstep. As and when you want, you can order a taxi. Uh, you can uh, get it. You will know exact how much it's going to charge you from point to point. So these are the different ways of doing business models. So these are also called business model innovations. If you look at disruptive innovations, disruptive innovations means that completely displaces the established businesses. Like uh, uh, there are many many businesses which are at the top of their uh, this thing, they are in their domain. They are the number one leaders in their domain, but there is some technology or some innovation that comes in picture, which completely disrupts it uh, and uh, they lose the entire market share. Some of these examples are, I'm sure some of you would have used, uh, uh, some of you means those who are uh, in the, uh, born in the early eighties or some of students may not be knowing, but you might have read it somewhere. There used to be a Kodak films. We used to the, in the, all the cameras, <coughs> to take the pictures, you used to put a 12, 12 film roll or 24 film rolls. But uh, then there came the digital cameras. So digital cameras completely disrupted the Kodak films uh, market. So Kodak film market, basically Kodak was the number one leader in the films. But when the digital cameras came in, it kind of made the, the Kodak films uh, non-existent uh, today. Now digital camera also, previous about 15 years back or 20 years, 15 years back, 
there used to be some digital cameras. People used to buy digital cameras to take pictures. But over the last 15 years, 10, 15 years, the smartphones actually have a capability to take the digital picture or the, take the digital so uh, uh, movie pictures as well as videos. So that disrupted even digital cameras. While digital cameras are still there, but they are specialized cameras, okay, which are used only by the photographers and this thing. But generals, you and me, all of us, we don't use digital cameras. We use our cameras from our from our smartphones. There's another example of a nice disruptive innovation is Netflix and all these uh, OTT medias, OTT mediums. So Netflix, Amazon Prime, or Sony Live, some of these uh, uh, online media. This is this this disrupted the market. Previously, there used to be a video cassette market about uh, again 15, 20 years back or 20, 25 years back where you used to have rent a video cassettes to see the films <coughs> or if you want to see any particular serials, you will uh, take those cassettes and bring it home, uh, run it on your VCP video cassette player or a VCR and then uh, you could see it and give it back to the this thing. There used to be video cassette libraries. Uh, there were much larger businesses in that, but uh, media like uh, or the apps like Netflix, Amazon Prime, that has completely disrupted that market. There is no 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 requirement of uh, uh, video cassettes or this thing. Even Netflix and uh, these things are disrupting the market for TV also. So basically, if you look at it, a lot of people are not even uh, taking a D two C direct to consumer TV uh, channels because they can see all those things through. Uh, different uh, medias like a uh, different uh, apps like Netflix or Amazon Prime and some of those. So these are some of the examples. These are also innovations. So it is just not a technology innovation that we think about innovation. If you think about uh, incremental innovation, there is also factor of doing something additional than what you already have. Like example, great examples of that Gillette blades. If you look at the trans transformation of Gillette blades over the last 15, 20 years, you will see that they started with a single blade, then twi two twin blades, then now three blades are there, then swiveling uh, uh, this thing, razor. So these are the different ways of doing incremental innovations in something that you already have. Different variants of Coca-Cola or Cadbury's. So these are the things which are also, if you can think of, they are incremental innovations. It's Cadbury has been existent for so many years, but every few years you will see that new form of Cadbury comes in new ingredients come in that's a incremental innovations product innovation this is this is something which is real more more related to technology innovation where technology products come in newly okay which are also kind of not disruptive they don't disturb the market but they create their own market of the like if you think about uh, iphones okay or any apple products apple products have created their own uh, market for their own uh, this thing for customers. So whether you talk about Apple uh, laptops, you will talk about Apple iPods previously used to have. now iPads or their uh, uh, Apple uh, iPhones. So there's a separate uh, complete stream of uh, products that Apple come up with. That's a product innovations. Fitbits. A lot of times you see now smartphones or smartwatches are there. Like uh, there are uh, which are the Fitbits which also not only gives you a time, but it also gives you a, uh, if monitors your health vital parameters throughout the day, whatever you do, how much you sleep, how is your sleep, uh, how much are you walking, are you how much are you climbing, uh, how much stress is there. <coughs> so all these parameters are there in the, most of the smart watches like this. So Fitbits of smart watches is another product innovation. LED light bulbs, Amazon Kindle for reading the uh, books. So these are the product innovation. There is a great process innovation that has come in over the last 30, 30, 40, 35 years. And one of the major process innovation that came into the industry was the assembly line. If you look at it, uh, most of the uh, manufacturing industry today have an assembly line where from the raw material to the end product, the entire assembly line is set up where you could the entire material goes through a different transformation and different machineries and then you get a final product. So that is a great process innovation. How, how do you automate the manual process which is happens in manufacturing industry through an assembly line? That's a process. So if you look at it, these are some of the examples of innovation. 
So when we want to talk about validation of innovation, I wanted to touch upon the basic uh, principles of what is innovation. Okay. Now let us see that how do you uh, when you when you do a startup. Okay. How do you what stages you go through? Okay. So if you look at there are multiple stages of a typical startup journey. Okay. Ideation. So we'll spend a lot of time on ideation, basically a validation. Ideation is a validation. I just want to give you a brief overview of for next couple of slides about startup. Then we'll get into the details of ideation. But ideation is an extremely important step because ideation verifies that your product or your solution is fit for the market or it is exactly solving the problem there is that exists in the industry or a society. Once you have made that validated that idea or an innovation, then you move into creating a minimal viable product or your solution. Then you get into the uh, take it to the market kind of for initial few customers. They called alpha testing, beta testing or beta uh, products uh, launch. So you launch the product to a few customers, which is also called as a uh, uh, leading customers kind of a thing or uh, initial customers. So there you get a customer feedback. You keep modifying your product so that it becomes for a larger audience, larger customer base. It is fit for the customer requirements. Then you start getting paying customers where you they start paying you. And once you have that, that is called a revenue traction stage of a startup. You start scaling your startup. So you 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 look at you start from a uh, one city, one state, and you start expanding your customer base across different cities, different states, different countries. <coughs> so that's how you scale your startup. And at some point in time, there's a possibility that you might exit a startup. So these are different stages of a startup. So if you look at it, ideation, where what we will explain in more detail in the few slides, how do you really validate the idea? It's basically an identification of a problem. You say identification of problem, there is some pain points. Each customer, when you observe in your society, you observe there are so many problems, and some of the problems hits you, and that's when you start thinking that I need to define a solution to this problem. And that's where that's an idea. That's called an idea. And ideation is to verify that idea. So then you start exploring multiple solutions, right? Problem solution fit. What when you say these are very important words, problem solution fit, product market fit. These are two very, very critical aspects of uh, ideation. So what you do is whatever problem that you have identified and your solution, are they perfectly matching? There are different uh, concepts called value proposition framework, which actually gives you a, that match, whether there is a right match between a problem and a solution or a product and a customer or a market. Then, then you look at it. Okay, now you have identified your solution, but there is always a possibility, or there may be or may not be possibility, but there is a possibility that some other business or some other startups are providing a solution which may not be exactly like your solution, but something similar solution to what you have defined. So then you start identifying the competition who is providing the similar solution. Define what is your USP. USP is unique selling proposition or your differentiator kind of a thing for your solution. So that you define. Then you build, once you've done the ideation, once you have done that your problem, your solution is better than competition. Your solution has some differentiator. Your solution is actually going to solve the problem that they exist. Then you start building your solution, build your team. There's also a concept of market sizing and customer profiling. I will spend few slides on that also on how do you define customer consumer? How do you define your market size? And then you do a develop a prototype using your team and the technology. Then you get it to the market. As I said, get paying customers scaling and exist strategy. We'll spend some few minutes. The reason why I'm spending this uh, one next slide on the startups is because a lot of times uh, there is a, a dilemma in uh, startup founders mind that uh, you need a money. Money is the most important aspect for a startup. Uh, and uh, if there is no money, the startups fails. There is, that is not right. 
if you look at a survey of uh, startups that are failed over a period of so many years in the worldwide startup failure journey okay you will realize that the maximum percentage of the startup fail almost 40% and more than that startup fail is because there is no market need and today's topic is innovation validation or idea validation and that is exactly what will get satisfied if you do a right market survey if you do a right uh, validation of your solution so i think that is one of the thing in other terms what you see that is you develop something you don't go talk to customers you start you feel that your product is going to satisfy the solution uh, your uh, so problem and you don't talk to the customers and you bring it in the market and then you get into a situation where the number one failure is you build something that nobody wants so there is again a market uh, not you are not identified the market you are not validated the market so if you look at it these are the the major reason for startup failures is not money money is part of it but not verifying the market not validating your solution with the market and not having right team and some of those things are there are many such reasons but majority of the is the market research and market uh, validation now let's talk about uh, we will talk about uh, these few concepts of idea validation market sizing uh, customer consumer and then how does the incubator helps you to take your idea into a startup a uh, few slides next five six slides will spend on idea validation now what is idea validation or you can also treat it like a innovation i am i am using the words innovation and idea almost similarly so what is a innovation validation or idea validation so when we build our product for the first time we don't know how many and who wants our product so uh, we just have an idea and we think that it is going to solve the problem but who will want to who, who wants that product we assume there is a lot of assumption that you think that people have a problem or some industry has a problem the problem is important and my solution is perfect these are the some things that are in an entrepreneurs or a founders mind and they love they they fall in love with their product or they fall in love with their solution saying that i know there is a problem that people have so that problem is important and i know my solution is perfect but these are all assumptions in their mind okay so idea validation is a solution to this first to this thing it is basically a extremely critical extremely important activity to be performed before we invest time money effort so even before you start thinking that i need to develop your my uh, solution and investing any time money and effort into it you need to ensure that you minimize the risk of no market need which is one of the major failure of startup failures okay that is what is the idea validation so it is it is again one other way to look at it it is idea where you should test your idea is to test your market to learn faster and to fail fast the failing fast will save your money failing fast means doesn't mean that you just uh, pack your star startup and uh, get take up a job failing fast means you realize that this startup idea what i am thinking or this solution is not really what is required in the market let me tweak my solution let me pivot my solution so that it fits the market need so this is what is the high level concept of idea validation now how do you go about it this is concept yes i have assumptions but i need to verify this idea in the market how do you go about it so <clears throat> again this is i think just a repetition it's a verification of your assumptions of your problem solution and this thing verification need of the market uh, customers are willing to pay for your solution this is another area that you can find out that okay if i am developing a solution and i am going to charge x rupees for that solution will it be acceptable by customers to pay for that solution okay and does the my solution or my business idea has a potential so how do you go about it so this is step by step process of your validation of your idea and innovation so write down the following aspects 
in uh, one piece of table. What is your idea in detail? What problem your idea is will be solving? Who is your customer? There is a customer and consumer. We will come back to that later. But who is your customer? Customer is somebody who pays for your product. What are the pain points of that customer? Does it solve the problem? What is your solution? And what features of your product benefits and value is being pursued by the customer? I want to spend a couple of minutes on this features, benefits and value. A lot of times uh, we technicians, okay, when we start our startup or when we think of our idea to be converted into a startup, we always talk about feature of the product. Okay. While feature of the product is important, the most important aspect is the value. And how does one get value? Features get converted to benefits. Benefits gets converted to value to the customer or consumer. Okay. And customer or consumer pays you for the value that they perceive. They don't pay you for a feature. Feature is from your perspective is important because that is what is going to give value. But customer always look at value. They do not look at how you have developed the uh, product. If you take an example of uh, uh, just the same Fitbit, okay. If if I don't know really what's there inside, what feature, what sensors it is using, or what technology it is using, how it is packaged together, I really don't know. I as an end consumer look at the value that it is passing to me. It is able to give me how much I walked in a day. It is able to give me how much I climbed in a day. It is able to give me how, how good I am sleeping throughout the night, how much deep sleep I am getting. Uh, it is able to give me how much stress that I am creating in my during my day. Okay. So these are the values that I perceive. I do not really don't need to know what are the features of this, this thing, how they have been built. Okay. So that's there's a difference between each of these three terms, features, benefits, and value. While these are all these three are important. When you start developing a product, features are important, but when you start selling into the market, when you take it to the market, value that you per the customer perceive is very important. So in the process, once you have listed down all the points that we discussed on the previous slide, you do a market research. Market research, there can be two ways. One is a primary research and second, secondary research. Primary research is something you actually go to the market. You try to talk to your customers and consumers and try to understand, uh, get all the assumptions verified. So how do you do market research? So first you need to decide what is your target market for your product. There is called a customer profiling. What are the characteristics of the market? Like if you are trying to sell a product, let's take an example of, a, uh, I was talking to Professor Gaikwad and he says one of our startup is building a smart trolley. The question that will come should come to my mind is what is the target market? Is it a B2B market or a B2C market? The trolley smart trolley, is it going to be bought by a customer or is it going to be bought by a shop in mall? If it is going to be bought by shop in mall, then it is a B2B market. Now, even though my consumer, who is going to use the trolley is a end user like you and me who go to malls in a shop and use the trolley. But the somebody who is going to pay me is not my you and me end consumer. Somebody is going to pay me is the shop owner or the mall, which is a big bazaar or reliance or DMART or whoever it is. So I need to sell my product features to that customer. So there's a characteristic of that market. Basically my target customers characteristics of a, are a supermarket shop shop owner or a, a small market shop owner or a, a, a different sh shops in a mall, super, a mall where they purchase trolleys. So that is my customer profiling. Now then once you're done that, then you start defining the size of the market. There is concept of TAM, SAM, SOM. There's a one slide on that. I also put that. What is size of the market? Then the point comes is, is it a right time to enter the market? Sometimes there are some very good products, very good solutions, but they are either ahead of the requirement in the market or they are way 
late in the market there are so many other players in the market so you need to also understand am i am i entering the market at the right time okay is there a competition what is your usp what is your business model there can be multiple business model i talked about simple b2b b2c b2b2c b2g there are so many combinations are there nowadays business to business business to consumer business to business to consumer business to government okay b2b i just took an example of a smart trolley it is a b2b example it may not it will never be bought by the uh, end consumer the way we will pay for it directly is they might charge the b2b business who is having a smart trolley might charge extra to me as a part of their products that they are selling but i will not be paying directly to a smart trolley so it's a b2b is this thing b2c is a great example is uh, your amazon is a b2b b2c it's also is a b2b to c because amazon directly sells the product amazon as a platform sells the product to a consumer but amazon sells those products to a consumer through the other businesses which are there or the vendors who have their products on the amazon platforms so it's a b2b to c b2g is a government something like suppose somebody is developing a uh, uh, on the uh, your roads uh, potholes are there to fix the potholes they are creating a machinery one of our startup is developing that machinery that will be b2g because their consumer is government somebody is developing a solution for villages and smart cities okay using a gis platform that is a b2g because government is going to use it either jilla parishad will use it or a uh, district uh, uh, authority will use it or a state government will use it so that's a b2g so you need to understand what is your business model and the last and important point is at what price points customers are willing to purchase my product <clears throat> if there is a competition you can easily make out that if there is no competition then you need to get into the what we discussed about perceived value whether customer will pay for the perceived value that they are getting from my product so the market research you can do two ways either you can develop it as a uh, survey which you take it to customers directly market research is like a secondary research where there are a lot of research papers available uh, there are uh, uh tejas uh, i will uh, certainly answer your question uh, at the end of the session and maybe you can note down the uh, question so coming to the idea validation process coming to that thing next is you develop a prototype now you have you have done a market research you have validated that yes what i am thinking what my adam is at building the prototype and again test that in the market that is also validation of the product what you have developed minimum viable product so you build minimum features as a prototype to showcase that your product features are right launch it to alpha beta customers and get a feedback and then refine it further you can also create a validation dashboard like you can list on all your assumptions problem solutions and all assumptions to validate each assumption when you go and talk to customers if you realize that something in the assumption is wrong start revalidating or re reviewing that change that solution and that will lead to proceed or pivot thing is something you have thought in your mind and you are trying to change the that particular thing when you actually talk to customers because that assumption is not perfectly right okay if you look at the startups majority of the startup if you see uh, successful startup and you talk to their founders they will say that what they started an idea with and they, what they ended up doing what they currently selling in the market or selling in the this thing what their product is it's quite different it might have 60 50 60% similar uh, features and similar values that they thought that will give it to customers but the actual solution is quite different because they have pivoted with the customers inputs to so that their product and the market fit is right if the product market fit is not right again we are getting into our one of the major failure of the startup because that's the number one failure unless you have a product market fit unless you have problem solution fit your solution is not going to get accepted 
So as I talk, this is secondary research. As I talk, you can go to publish papers, market trends, questionnaires, surveys, which can be online or offline. You can actually build target customers, interview them. Social media is a great platform to do online surveys nowadays. You can use Facebook, Twitter, WhatsApp, and so on. For testing your product after it is MVP is ready, you can do smoke test size, landing pages, for verifying pricing mechanism, analytics. So all these are different ways of validation. These are the kind of tools to validate to your idea or to tools to get the validation done. So let's talk about, uh, I, as I said, we will spend some time on customer and consumer. See that there's a very critical, a lot of times there's a confusion between customer and consumer. There's a very clear differentiator between customer and consumer. There's somebody who pays for your product. Is somebody who consumes the product or uses the product or service. There's a possibility that consumer can be a customer directly, but there's a also this thing, but consumer cannot always be a customer. Okay. Customer can resell the product like B2B2C. B2 consumer, because it's consumer is consuming the product, they cannot resell the product. They are the end consumers. Customer need to purchase the product for using it. Consumers do not need to purchase. I will give you some examples of this. Let me just go through this. For customer, it's either to consume or resale, whereas for consumer, it is always for consumption. Customer can be individual or an organization. Consumer can be individual family member of an organization. The best example of a consumer and customer differentiation is uh, one talked about, uh, uh, I talked about Cadbury's, right? Cadbury can be consumed by a, <clears throat> uh, people like who are on the call, uh, who are faculties or students, or some of your younger brother, siblings, younger child. That's a consumer. They, those who eat that chocolate. Now, so if there's a child is of five years age or 10 years age, does the child has a capability to pay for the chocolate? No. Who pays for the chocolate? Their parent, their relative, or their friend. So whoever pays for the chocolate is a customer. Now, why this is important? When you are doing your survey, suppose I am I am developing a new brand of chocolate. Okay. So who do I, why do I need to worry about? I need to first worry that the end user consumer who is going to use my who is going to consume my chocolate must like it. So the child should like it and child should push the parent to buy it. Then why customer is important? Why customer is important? Customer is also important because customer is going to pay for it. Now, if I come up with a chocolate, which is like 25 rupees and you get a chocolate of Cadbury brand, new brand, like Cadbury uh, established brand for 10 rupees, similar chocolate. The customer is going to say, I will buy Cadbury. Why will I buy your chocolate? So <clears throat> why customer is important also? Because you need to look at the economics of that customer behavior, whether he's ready to pay for it, whether it is comparable with the market, your product price. So that's why both are important. That is the basic fundamental difference between customer and consumer. Consumer is somebody who consumes, customer is somebody who pays. Both can be same, but consumer cannot resell the product. Consumer only consumes, customer are the, able to resell it, customer can pay for it, customer can re, uh, this thing, and this is the basic difference. And both are important. They are the, as I give an example of Cadbury chocolate, both are important. When you are looking at marketing your product or when you are looking at finding your market, okay, you need to think about both of them. So, uh, customers create a demand for the market. Okay. Whereas consumers, they also create demand and services. So both are crea demand creators. Uh, there are different types of consumers. I will not get into this with the time uh, constraint. But there is a, especially when you talk about B2B, in a business to business scenario, there can, uh, when you think about a customer, suppose you think about a, a customer where you are purchasing a, uh, machinery from a uh, industry, which is developing and you are buying it for your college. It's a B2B sale. Okay. 
the uh, from the perspective of manufacturing industry they are giving it to a college which is a business so they are giving a b2b sale or they are giving to another industry which is a business so b2b now when you talk about a business it is not a individual who makes a decision it's a group of indi indi individuals who make a decision that is called a decision making unit it can be somebody who wants customer to buy the product primary economic buyers influencers v2 power purchasing department so it's called a decision making unit which totally makes a decision each one has a say in it but the decision is done together jointly so that's a, that's a one other concept i am uh, since with the time uh, each of these topics can be in half an hour discussion for each of these topic but i am trying to cover so that you get a complete glimpse of the concepts while you convert your idea or innovation into a startup so about market sizing tam sam and so on. this is how you define your market uh, total addressable market serviceable addressable market to market so that is what tam sam and so on is tam is a larger market sam is a subset of that that you are going to service and som is that you are going to obtain now what is the difference between this each one of them tam again both all these three are not the lot of time there is a, we find a lot of founders when they do the uh, pitch decks to us or when they pitch in front of the evaluation committee uh, they mention my tam is uh, 20000 users or 20000 organizations in india not the tam that is your market uh, uh, customer sizing market is always in a revenue potential so if you have a 20000 customers who are going to buy your product and your price for each customer is 10000 rupees then the tam is 20000 into 10000 that is a tam so it's always in the revenue terms please remember that it's a revenue for the entire market one other concept is it doesn't include competition if there is a competition if your product already has a competition so it doesn't include it is because you can still capture that competition also so that's why it's called total addressable market normally when the investors trying to invest in your startup they look at what is the potential and the potential is looked by the tam sam is <coughs> now within a tam because of your product features you are going to service a specific market that is serviceable market so that is a subset of a tam which you are going to service now within sam the realization market realistic by different by geography or what is targeted by that that is why the service by the startup now som is a serviceable optimal market or a share of market even even right now in a sam also there is no competition so you do not include a competition in the sam som is basically what you immediately can service what you can obtain when you are what you can obtain naturally the competition comes into picture so if there is a competition, if there are three players in the market already existing for your product, then your SOM will be one fourth of the market. And also the geography that you again, out of SAM use carrot for the geography, saying that I will target this particular city first. So that will be the SOM. So it is a B-shade market. Including competition, the most most important factor is including competition and b shed b shed means something that you are trying to leverage uh, this concept came from uh, world war uh, 2 where uh, one of the european uh, beach was used as a uh, uh, leverage by allied forces okay so that's why it's called b shed so what you do in from the business perspective Suppose, suppose you start your business in Pune as a city, then Pune becomes your beachhead market. Then you can expand into other cities of Maharashtra. Then you can expand into India. So your SOM will be for Pune, okay? Including the competition that you uh, you have for your market, your, for your product, okay? I think we can spend, uh, in, if time permits, if anybody has any questions, I can answer them later on this concept. Now let's come back to the, uh, there is another great concept I think uh, uh, all founders must prepare business model canvas. Okay. This gives a one 
complete picture of your whole startup in one uh, kind of a one page. There are nine parameters that are there in a business model canvas. Three of them related to the cost, three of them related to the revenue, value proposition, and the cost and revenue. So let's look at what is a business model canvas. As I said, there are three of them. If you look at the right hand side of a business model canvas, which is customer relationships, customer segments, and channels, that is more a customer centric view. Okay. And that is what is going to generate your revenue. A new proportion of the entire your startup is in the center. The key partners, key activities, key resources are the cost that is going to this thing. The other way to look at this business model canvas is okay, this particular uh, section of a right hand side from value half of value provision relationship customer segment channel is do you want it what are the value proposition what is the value proposition who is your customer how are you going to relate to your customer what is the customer segment how are you going to approach for marketing channels so that's a desirability then comes feasibility are you going to build it and for building who are the partners that you require what are the resources required what are the activities that you are going to do to build this product that you are going to give it to the customer the last one is viability whether it is viable will this ever become profitable and why so business model canvas is these three there are multiple again a uh, few uh, perspective on business model canvas i am just going to cover this one so if you look at this is very important from the customer perspective this is important from your internal perspective okay and this is from the revenue perspective like whether your cost is aligned with the revenue whether you are unit economics they call it as unit economics whether your product or your problems or your service has a unit economics right that means are you making profitability on a unit of service or unit of product that you are going to sell that's a basic concept of business model canvas. Okay. Now let's come to the, uh, we, are, uh, so in summary, what we have discussed so far is what is the innovation, different types of innovations. We discussed how does one goes through a startup journey from an idea or innovation to building their product, to take it to the market and scaling. What are the major, one of the important aspect of a startup that they need to focus on? Because most of the startup fail for that is a product market fit or the market that uh, uh, builds something that market requires. Then we looked at how do you validate your idea or innovation, different ways of doing idea validation. Then you look at how do you define your market. For defining your market, you need to know your customer and consumer. What's the difference between customer and consumer? How do you define your market size, TAM, Samsung? And how do you put everything put together in a <coughs> one pager canvas of your stuff? startup okay now let's look at it uh, last 10 minutes on how does an incubator i think uh, you have a iic sale in your uh, campus or an incubator like uh, see you with bahu institute or there are many incubators in uh, india okay how do they help the startup during their journey so the role of incubators and incubation so look at it an incubator is provides you these are the basic facilities or basic uh, services that they provide. They provide your physical office space. They provide lab and R&D facilities either at an incubator space or at a uh, academic institution. They provide your mentoring, which could involve both technical mentoring as well as business mentoring. They will be able to provide you a networking with the industry <laughs> and networking with your domain in which you are building a product. IP management, if your product has a uh, potential to file a patent. How do you uh, file a patent? Who do you go to? They also give entrepreneurship related trainings, third party services. Every star business or every startup has to create a company, legal company, which either can be a proprietary firm, limited liability partnership firm, or a private limited company. How do you decide which one you want to go for it? who can be a builder develop create a company for you who can register it for you once you are registered they you need to keep filing financial compliances so the finance and account companies ip management companies during your development of your product 
you might require somebody to develop your website you might require somebody to help you developing your actual technical product you might need to manufacture it so you might need a fabricator so all these are third party services a incubator has a access to the different third party services okay so they can provide that funding support incubator also has a funding sub can provide funding support, which could be in form of a government schemes like uh, bahu institute has uh, nidhi dst nidhi eir prayas seed support funding startup india seed support so they are they are promoting these four funding schemes to government government gives the money to incubator incubator gives it to startups select and startup and gives it to them so that funding support they also have a csr funding support so like in case of just give an example of bahu institute uh, we have multiple csrs which are running along with our uh, institute to provide the csr funds to our startups there also can be a uh, hni high network indiv indiv individuals or uh, vc uh, venture capitalist firms or some of the seed angel investment firms like indian angel network mumbai angel network thai pune angels uh, aha ventures 100x dot vc these are some of the investors that you can connect uh, that incubator can help you to connect with also incubator can help you to provide you interns because a lot of startups you know, having a cash crunch bootstrap mode they are not able to afford to pay for senior user, but they can afford to take interns so they can provide interns these are some of the services that incubator is a one stop shop which can facilitate for you uh, the incubator can connect you with this entire startup ecosystem which can include government government schemes academic institutions for interns as well as for lab facilities research institutions or trade industry institutions for your <coughs> secondary market research other incubators because there is possibility that uh, we as a incubator may not be able to satisfy your full requirement so even we connect you to the other incubators other accelerators where your startup has moved from a stage of uh, revenue traction it has started earning revenue traction but now it needs to scale up so there are accelerators who help you scale up mentors and advisors technical mentors business mentors and service providers i discussed about it corporates your product might require to be b2b scenario it might be tested to be at a different corporate organization different industry domains so within that domain other industries so we also help you to connect with the corporates and the investors so this is the entire ecosystem of a startup ecosystem which an incubator builds so that it can connect to the it can help the startup founder to convert his idea into the uh, enterprise uh, that's it Th thank you all thank you uh, professor gaikwad and the entire team and uh, i am now keep next uh, few question few this thing for q and a if there is during my presentation Thank you, sir. Hello. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it was really a, a wonderful session and uh, definitely a lot to learn when you are going uh, through each and every point of mm -hmm. this journey from ideas, innovations to startup. Sure. So yeah. if somebody has raised some queries, question, page or something. Yeah, we'll, had... we'll go for the question and answer yeah. session. Yeah, I yeah. request the participants to please uh, state your questions or put it in the chat box. Let it be any doubt. Yeah, any anything. Yeah, any doubt which comes to your mind, just put it across. I request all the participants do not uh, do not hesitate even if you belong to the first year or the final year. And even if the question is a very dumb question, please do because yeah. uh, only the dumb questions. Law. Everybody has a question in their mind, but somebody who uh, makes the courage to ask a dumb question, everybody is oh, uh, that that's a good question. So every True. question is always a good question. True. And not that I will be able to answer all, but uh, I will try to answer whatever questions you have whether through my my experience. Okay, I'll uh, I'll take the initiative to ask you sure. the first question, sir. Sure, sure. Generally, it requires a courage and mm. a decision making 
to uh, go with a business idea or to go with a business startup and mm. there are lot many ideas which come to our mind but choosing the best one becomes a difficult task can mm. you please please throw light on this sir see uh, uh, you are right there are always uh, when when one uh, when one start thinking that i need to uh, develop some solution for an idea or a problem okay yes sir. and you start uh, observing the problems in the society you yes. see there are so many problems okay so uh, not every you yeah you cannot every problem you cannot uh, think that i will develop a solution so you need to identify which one is right for me to develop or which one is right for me to take it forward see everybody has a uh, internal uh, uh, and startup is a i will say it's a moderate risk it's not a major risk because if you do, do it logically and you take step by step right right steps okay startups can be successful okay now how do you identify which one is right for me to take it forward okay that's a question if i understand yes sir so so in that case i think you need to understand one is uh, uh, my own strengths okay that is one thing second thing is uh, 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 whether i have passionate about that particular uh, problem that i am trying to solve okay because as is, as we say the startup is a tough journey okay it is a moderately risk journey but it is a very uh, fulfilling journey at the end of the day so you need to understand whether i will be passionate about solving that problem whether whatever hell happens i will continue to focus on that problem that passion and ensuring that i will solve that problem is something so you need to for that particular idea you need to see that am i passionate about solving it or am i doing it sometimes i will just use the because we have a technical students here they will say i am i am doing this project for my third year or fourth year of engineering and uh, maybe this can become a startup so i will start working on it but it they are they are not just passionate about it so passionate comes from the genuinely you feel that that's a problem exists and i need to solve that problem okay once you have that passion once you have the capability you also need to understand your own capability if you do not have that capability you are you able to build a team around to build that cap product okay so there are all these factors you need to consider when you think that okay i should take this forward idea forward and then then naturally the step is idea validation and this thing come but that after you have thought that i want to take this idea forward great sir uh, there is a question from sushant yeah he wants to he wants to ask how to make a prototype of a startup idea and mm -hmm. how to present it uh sushant this is a very generic question because uh, prototype can be you now depends whether your product is a technology hardware product whether it is a software product whether it's a e-commerce site or a website or or some other thing so uh, to build your prototype okay uh, before even i will say that what whatever i covered in my presentation today you need to validate your idea or validate your technology solution itself okay uh, suppose you are developing a uh, techno hardware product okay you need to look at first uh, what all the components that you require okay what will the raw material required where i am going to purchase from who are the vendors that will provide it to me once you purchase the raw material have you prepared uh, depends on the there are different uh, uh, software tools for developing designing your prototype so what are, what will i require to design a prototype what type of skills and what type the kind of manpower that i will require to design a prototype once i have designed can i do the uh, testing on the uh, software tools to see that uh, i cover all the failures and all the aspects of a design then uh, collect the raw material take it to the like a fabricator or start putting it together do a uh, alpha testing beta testing take it to the launch it to the to focus to this thing so you uh, basically it's a standard way of building your prototype if you're talking about a software that you are developing naturally there is you will also have to de define the requirements of your software you will have to verify those with your customer you will have to see that uh, all those requirements can be put into a different stages phases i develop this in phase one i develop this in phase two 
okay what are the critical requirements which are must have requirements which are nice to have requirements could be done in phase 2 or phase 3 then you start developing the uh, build a team to develop your software uh, you start testing it so that, that's a standard way to develop a prototype how to present it is again i think uh, you will have to start presenting it the best way to present it is uh, competitions exhibitions okay uh, of the domain where your product is uh, identify a subset of a customer whom you go and say that i have this product i would like you to present it i would like to get your input rather than put, i am buy you go buy it okay don't don't go and present it to for somebody to buy it present it to get the idea get their feedback get their buy in and then you you yourself increase your confidence saying that yes lot of people are liking what i am doing and they have also given me some refinements enhancements do those enhancements take it back to them naturally they will say they will, if uh, same customer will say okay i won't mind paying it for you so that's how you start presenting it i think the exhibitions and the competitions is the best way to initially to present your idea or prototype okay uh, there is another question from our staff member sir mm -hmm. yeah many startup starts yeah. but after a year or two many we do to many factors right? how does government help support it if it fails what happens okay see uh, uh as I, I don't want to demotivate the student community here who are really thinking of startup while a general worldwide uh, statistics mention that 80 90 percent of the startup fail after a year or two okay the two or three main reasons one we discussed today in our presentation is not a right product to the market requirements well, suppose you have been able to get that, the, the chances of your product failure or your startup failure reduces to 30-40%. Now, the remaining 30-40% failure reasons could be is like a, you talked about uh, money is one aspect could be. You are not able to build your team. <coughs> you don't have a right co-founders. So, that's a team again, part of a team. So, I think... Uh, uh, Government has helped uh, initially. So, the government realizes that, uh, especially some of the schemes that government is pushing in, they realize that the startup, not everybody, is a tough journey and not everybody is uh, going to be successful. So, whatever government is giving the funds, they give EIR, which is Entrepreneurial Residence Scheme for that matter, which is uh, for immediately for the students who complete their graduation and they want to do a startup. For the one year, 30,000 rupees a month is given by government, by the EIR uh, fellow, okay? So that you can continue working on your prototype and this thing for a year. Once you come, get the idea is into a, some design stage, you can apply for a Prayas grant if it is a technology hardware product, okay? Which is up to 10 lakhs. So there's a funding given by government at a different levels of your startup journey, okay? But if it fails, I think... Uh, well, I always use this uh, sentence, once an entrepreneur is always an entrepreneur, okay? They will always find whether he or she will always find a solution or they will pivot their idea, okay? And they will work on some other idea. Government helps, government is helping through incubators as well as funding. There are only two helps government can give to you. Uh, the, so funding I explain and incubator. Incubator helps you in the terms they try to take you to these stages. They try to ensure that at every stage, are you doing right things? So, so you give that uh, kind of a, uh, kind of a review that happens regularly. Yeah. Hello. If you can, hello, am I audible? Am I audible? No, because I can't see Dr. Gaikwad, Professor Gaikwad was trying to be. Okay, no problem. Uh, I will look at the questions. If you can mention some sponsoring authorities for startups. Okay, the sponsoring authorities for startups, one is I talked about government and government has multiple schemes. I talked about EIR, PRIAS, seed support program, which can give up to 50 lakhs. Okay. Uh, there is a, a bi if it is a biomedical, there is a BIREC grant. 
there is a mighty if it is a it solution there is a mighty grant is there uh, then all these grants by the way are given on mostly through incubators grant or the funds okay and <coughs> there are also csr funds which also comes through incubators and there are vc firms which can uh, sponsor uh, authorities uh, this thing for startups so the, you, as soon as you register your startup a company okay you can register with dpiit which is a startup india seeds uh, startup india website and once you do that you can register with maharashtra state innovation society and once you do that at you will start getting and also get attached to an incubator which is also a sponsoring authority uh, i think you can get all support through these facilities great sir thank you sir do do indian customers like paying more for a product or they like spending less and what kind of customers pay more for a product i think i wouldn't generalize that indian customers don't like paying for more for a product or they like to spend less okay i think uh, one concept that i told you it is the value that your product provides to a customer is important okay today uh, there are mercedes also in buying being bought by indian customers which is a huge uh, the cost okay and there is also uh, tata nano or a maruti 800 or kind of a, this thing is bought so it is it is a value that you uh, perceive and the type of customer that you are targeting is important okay customers will pay for the value that they get if your product is giving a, a great value customers will pay for it but naturally your customer profile will vary okay if you are selling a, a deodorizer which is a deodorant which is 200 rupees you get it your customer is everybody okay but if you are selling a, a high end perfume which is costing 4000 rupees your customer profile is different okay the customer profile is different but that customer profile is ready to pay for a high end perfume even if it is 4000 rupees bottle for 100 ml they will pay for it because it is giving that perceived value to them so that is very important the perceived value is very critical when you have to think about how much customer will pay for it yes sir thank you uh, any any more questions can we take up a last question if is there any question otherwise we have to sum it up Okay, any staff members uh, still want to convey anything? Any uh, any doubts? Any questions to be asked? Okay, if there are no more questions, then we would like to go for the vote of thanks. Basically, we could uh, listen to Tarele, sir. Uh, after the, we actually, let me brief out with some of the points that we are associated with Bahu and we had a rapport with uh, Tadele sir from last five years. In between, we used to have a discussion. We used to be at Bahu. We used to meet the team members. We used to attend the programs. And that was the source of in inspiration and the source of learning for all of us. And that is how with the guidance of Tadele sir, as well as the sessions which we have attended there, all the eminent faculty, uh, faculties who shared their experiences. So from that learning, we started from a scratch and that's how our incubation set the, or the IIEDC was been set up with the guidelines uh, of these eminent personalities. And again, we also had a membership of IIC, which is the, which is the initiative of the central government. And so that uh, whatever planning is happening at the central government level, those has been percolated at the end beneficiaries that is to our college and that is to IEDC as well as all the students of this uh, institute. So with the help of uh, the plannings from the central government to the execution at the uh, end uh, beneficiary level is happening uh, with a very uh, strategic plan. And out of the uh, sessions which have been planned for all the students as well as the staff members or the aspiring uh, budding entrepreneurs, it, it's a journey uh, almost which took five years. 
and today we are fortunate enough to be a link of this journey and today we are fortunate enough to listen and to experience the enriched uh, session of Tadele sir. He has covered mostly all the part of this journey right from starting from an idea to you know, types of innovations and then the six stages of startups, then validation of idea, then market research and then validated, invalidated assumptions, results of validations and then a uh, difference between the customer as well as consumer this uh, different uh, difference between the market sizing tam sam som as well as well as uh, he has also covered the different business models the correlation between desirability, uh, desirability feasibility and valu valuability also he has uh, briefly mentioned the role of uh, incubator as well as he has also answered all the valid questions from all the participants. So with this, on behalf of our management, on behalf of our principal sir, Dr. P.B. Mane, on behalf of all, all the team members, a coordinator, Prajwal Gaikwad ma'am, then Itole sir, then Murunal Patak madam, Dumale sir, Sabashek ma'am, Kulkarni madam, Nidhi madam, on behalf of all of us, we are thankful to you, sir, for spending your valuable time and enriching us with your rich experiences. Thank Thanks you. to one and all. There is a small request. The link has been shared. I request all participants to fill up the feedback form. And uh, this is, this is uh, I believe, it's a start of our journey, sir. Thank you. Thank you. This so session you is... Yeah, definitely. We'll come up with the ideas. We'll come up with the projects. Sure. We'll come up with uh, some uh, startups. If they have any hurdles, we'll get back to you. Definitely, we will, we are going to have a fruitful association with you and a long term association with you. So you can you can always reach out to Bahu Institute also, or as well as personally to me. Okay? Yes, sir. I yes, can sir. I can help you on a personal front also, or students as well as if they want any ideas, validation, or if the evaluation for. Uh, uh, idea evaluation kind of a thing. I can always be part of a panel. Okay. Thanks and, a lot. Uh, if any guidance you need, you can always reach out to me in person or you can always reach out to Bhavan Institute. Definitely, sir. Definitely. Thank you. Thank Thanks you. a lot, sir. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Have a nice day, sir. We'll you get too. back to you, sir. You sure. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks a lot. We'll end up the meeting, sir. Yes. With yes. your permission. Yes. Yes. Thank you, sir.